Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to tell you how the 6000 XP held up to powering my entire property for the last two weeks. So if you're interested in seeing how it performs and what it can hold up to, everything I got in my house, stick around, because I'll get right into it. I installed the 6000 XP probably, well, at the end of January. And when I did that, I had one of the wall mount batteries that you see here and the 6000 XP, and I tied them into my barn. My barn consists of an old dairy barn that I have five horses in, so we have run a bunch of electric water heated buckets, I guess, or 15 gallon buckets. And my purpose of that was just to see how long they could run off the 6000 XP and one battery. At the time I had eight solar panels out front. Those were the Aptos 440 watt bifacial, which up to 550 watts um, solar panels. And they did phenomenal. I mean, I have them on my little ground mount. If you're interested in seeing how I did that, I'll throw a video link up here for you. Uh, that ground mount, they worked fantastic. I was getting max, pretty much maximum bifacial gain out of those eight panels at one point. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, super sunny days when it was sunny and there was snow on the ground. It would reflect all the way on the back and it, they worked fantastic. Um, but anyway, so back to the barn. Uh, see how long I could run the barn off of the 6000 XP. And it did great. It did fantastic. Uh, the eight panels were bare minimum. Uh, like I said, it was the end of January. So being the end of January, we don't have much sun. Uh, now it's mid-May, or sorry, mid-March. And we get a lot more sun now. So the eight panels will do a lot better. But after it did so well with the barn, I decided I was gonna hook it up to my entire house. So I have an old farmhouse, obviously with the old dairy barn. I have a brand new pole shed I built. I installed a second battery that I'm leaning on here uh, about two weeks after I hooked up to the barn. And then after that, I ran it for another week and it was doing so well. I mean, I barely use any battery throughout the night. So I'm like, I'm gonna put it on my house. I put my entire house on it. Obviously, when I did that, I had some challenges because I have an electric water heater and that is rated at 4,500 watts, 240 volts. Uh, the 6000 XP has zero problems running that, um, that water heater. It does it just fine. It, when it turns on, I've seen it spike up to it goes up to usually around 42 to 4,300 watts. So it's not actually 4,500 watts. Um, so it's, it's up towards max capacity for the 6,000 XP. Now with the circulating pump on the wood stove running, uh, other appliances in the house running, it was fine. It was right up there because when the water heater turns on, it's a very short amount of time. It's only for a couple minutes at a time usually because we're not running hot water all the time. So it, it goes pretty quick and it works fine. However, when you decide to turn on the hot water, do some dishes, whatever, and then the freezer downstairs is on, the circulating pump is on, the fridge upstairs is on, and then you turn the microwave on in the house, you can run it for about 30 seconds before it trips out on overload. It, I did end up tripping out on overload probably five times the first week because I had just hooked it up and I acted like nothing was different in the house. So I would do all my normal stuff and it was pretty much the times where microwave was running or we have like a 20 year old dishwasher that draws like 2200 watts when it runs. It's uh, So when that would run and water here would run, water pump kicks in, we have a well. So we have a 220 amp or 220 volt 20 amp pump too that runs for a well. It, all that stuff running at once, it, it won't handle it. it. It runs for 20, 30 seconds and then trips out an overload. Not a big deal because it just shuts everything off, obviously. And then it takes about four minutes from the time it kicks out to well, when it turns on the output power again. It needs time to run, cool everything off in there, you know, reduce loads and then it pops it back on and everything turns on again. We just wait a little while for the water heater to shut off and then turn on everything else back on. So 
with that being said, water heater, well pump, we are able to take shower. It has no problem running the water heater and our well pump because the well pump kicks on like 15, 20 seconds at a crack. So I think it's, it's right up there uh, around that 6,000 watts, 6,100 watts when we're doing that because we still have like Wi-Fi routers, you know, some random little lights on here and there and just little devices, cameras, whatever, the pump. Uh, so there's always like a three to 400 watt draw constantly. And that part of it is okay with the well and the water heater running when we take a shower. So it's not too bad about, not fine. We never had a kick out when we were taking a shower. We'll put it that way. Um, so overall, the 6000 XP would almost be a perfect fit for a small ranch home with like an LP water heater or something. It would work great for that. Um, I have a lot of stuff here that we run all the time and it did fine. It actually did okay. I would, you know, like I said, if I didn't have an electric water heater, I would start out with one of these for quite a while actually. You could probably get by for I would say six months to a year, especially if you're gonna start off in the spring and run it through the summer. If you're down south, it's a different story because there's no heat, you, you don't need as much heat. Uh, up here, Wisconsin, you need heat. You, there's usually a large energy draw from somewhere for heat, either it's LP, natural gas, if you're in town, electric heat. Um, like I said, I have wood heat, so I have two circulating pumps that run. I don't have any blowers. I do have a blower. I take that back. The wood stove has a blower. So you're always doing something for heat up here. But uh, if you're looking like a small hunting cabin, I mean, this is overkill. This honestly would be overkill for a small cabin unless you have like a well that's 220 or 240 volt. And then you would need something like this. And yeah, it would work good. I mean, if you, if you wanted, if you have grid power, and you want to start dabbling with solar, I would highly suggest picking up 10 solar panels because that's a minimum order for shipping from Signature Solar. Pick up one of these conduit box and one wall mount battery and you would probably be surprised how long you could run a house on that. Now, if you have a lot of hydro appliances, microwaves, ha, old dishwashers, multiple fridges or freezers, um, electric water heater, any electric heat, I would not recommend that <laughs> because it's just gonna kick out when there's gonna be times that you can't avoid where a bunch of stuff is running at once and it's gonna kick it out on overload. If you can deal with it, fine, but it's, uh, Overall, a very good unit. I would highly recommend it. So, moving forward, I have a 12,000 XP sitting in my shed right now. I just got the other day. That is gonna be replacing my 6,000 XP here very shortly. I got just enough room here to get it mounted on this drywall. When I get it mounted, the 6,000 XP is just gonna get put back in the box for now and in the short near future here in a few months we're going to be building a new barn and a new house at a property that we bought so all this stuff is coming with me that's why it's just kind of tempted in i know it doesn't look super pretty but that's why i'm doing this i'm testing it all out now to see what these things can handle how much power i need how many panels i need how many batteries i need it's all just testing so I know there's a lot of you out there that are going to watch this and be like, oh, you can't install it that way. You can't do this. You can't do that. I've already got a ton of comments on that, but it doesn't matter because it's all getting taken down in a month or two. And also codes are different in different states, different counties. If you're thinking about using a 6000 XP, it's very possible. If you're very, if you're very conservative with your energy usage, you could definitely get away with it. You could definitely power an entire house off of this. I would recommend two of the batteries just because you get cloudy days. You're not gonna have enough power for one battery. 
unless you have a generator backup you want to use or if you're still grid tied you can use the the grid input on here and it'll supplement the battery charging and all you can change all those settings yourself and i have other videos on that as well if you want to see that but uh yeah so thanks for watching thanks for sticking around i hope you got something out of this i hope it piqued your interest a little bit and if you're interested in anything i do have all the links down below to signature solar for all the products here stay tuned for my 12,000 xp install video when i take this thing out and put my 12,000 xp in and we'll be doing some testing with that i honestly don't uh, foresee any issues with that at all being it's twice the size of this i should have zero issues so thanks again for watching guys if you're interested hit subscribe like this video share it whatever you want to do i appreciate it we'll see you on the next one just got my shipment of tigo rapid shutdown modules for all my solar panels and i got my 12,000 xp fantastic job as usual by signature solar on packaging these things up to ship them out they do a phenomenal job as you can see i've i got a few things of theirs around here for the new house 